Hello, I'm the Eternal Newbie. The extra L is for nothing, because I couldn't think of anything. So I'll just welcome you to another edition of Homebrew Hoedown, where we look at different homebrews available to see if they are good, bad, or, uh, okay. And yes, I am definitely still working on the name. Today, we're going to look at a subclass for my favorite class in Dungeons & Dragons, the Monk. One thing to keep in mind about Monk subclasses is they are all kind of boring. Basically, I punch, therefore I am. Now I know there is more to it than that, but I find all of them kind of lacking. This one is definitely a little more exciting, so let's take a look at this Monk subclass, Way of the Exploding Fist. Way of the Exploding Fist? Ew! I thought this was a family show. What's next? Barbarian Path of the Fluffer? Monks of the Way of Exploding Fists devote their training to combine their speed to deliver hard punches. Wait, what are they combining their speed with? You know, never mind. According to legend, monks following this tradition are even able to hit so hard that it causes a small explosion. It may be that. Or they like to boast with loud noises they can make with their punches. Okay, whatever, moving on. At third level, you get Exploding Fist. You learn to direct the momentum from your speed to your ability to attack. When you use your action to dash, you can use a bonus action to make one unarmed melee attack. If you move at least 20 feet in a straight line immediately before it. If you hit with this attack, your fist rings with thunder that is audible within 100 feet of you, and each creature within 5 feet of you must make a constitution saving throw. On a failed save, a creature takes 3d4 thunder damage and is pushed 5 feet away from you. On a successful save, the creature takes half as much damage and isn't pushed. Damage dice used for this ability are your martial arts dice. Dices? Really? I mean, dices. Well, that's, uh, kinda OP. I mean, a 5 foot pushback is situational. It can be useful to push someone away from the caster so that they can run. Or if the enemy is stupid enough to be standing in front of a cliff, you could totally make them regret it. But you add in the fact that it hits all creatures within five feet of you, and you are one happy monkey. I am not a fan of the whole audible to 100 feet thunder thing, because any enemy that's close now knows something is wrong. Unless you play it off as the dwarf snoring, but that only works once. But it gets so much better. Additionally, when hit, you can spend one key point for every 20 feet you traveled in a straight line. So there are three additional martial arts dice for the damage and to increase the distance of Thunderous Boom by 50 feet. The maximum number of key points that you can spend on the punch equals your proficiency bonus. You see what I mean? You can really lay at the smackdown on an enemy with the right setup. You dash 40 feet and spend a couple of key points at level 3, and all of a sudden instead of doing 3d4 to every enemy within 5 feet of you, you're now doing 9d4. Yeah, suck on that wizard. Well, I got a good one. How about the Bard College of the Rusty Trombone? You know, for those ambidextrous bards. At 6th level, you get Intercepting Fist. You learn to counter enemy attacks with a powerful blow of your fist. When an attacker that you can see hits you with a melee attack, you can use your reaction to make an unarmed strike. If your attack hits, the damage you take from the attack is reduced by the damage you inflicted, plus your monk level. If you reduce the damage to zero, Attacking creatures take remaining damage. Additionally, you can spend one key point to force attacking creatures to make a strength saving throw or be knocked prone. All right, this is freaking cool. It's basically a free damage reduction once around, and as a bonus, you get a chance to damage or prone your enemy. Monks aren't exactly known for their high HP, and any damage reduction is a godsend. For example, Carrick, my level seven monk with a heart of copper, would get a D6 damage plus seven. He also goes down more than a $2 lady of the evening, so taking 8 to 13 less damage each round would be game changing. I mean sure, it depends on you hitting, but it's better than what I have now, which is basically hopes and prayers, and not even the good kind of cleric prayers. Lamo monk prayers. At 11th level, you get Spin Dash. You learn to control your momentum to grant you limited ability to fly. When you take a dash action, you can spend one key point to keep moving in a straight line until your movement ends. If you end your action in midair, you will fall. 
While moving during this dash action, non-magical, difficult terrain does not cost you extra movement, nor does moving through a creature's space, and you don't provoke opportunity attacks. Moreover, if you pass through the creature's space while using this ability, you force that creature to make constitution saving throw or be stunned until the end of your next turn. Now this could be a bit clearer, but I believe what it's saying is as long as you finish your movement on solid ground, you can run on air. I mean, that's what the whole flying thing means, right? So say you're on the top of one tower and you want to go to another tower, as long as you have enough movement, you're good. The other part is nothing special if you're only hitting one creature. But if you can convince your enemies to all stand in a straight line, you get multiple stunning strikes in one round. For one key point. Basically, this. Okay, <laughs> okay, last one. The wizard school of fingering! <laughs> what? Oh, get your mind out of the gutter. It's for those really hard to make somatic gestures. And the ladies. Now, I would love to hear your ideas for subclasses like this, so hit me up with a comment. Gracias. Finally, at 17th level, you get Improved Exploding Fist. You can direct your force of speed into your fist. Whenever you hit a creature with an attack granted by Exploding Fist, you can spend three key points to create a blast of key energy. Choose creatures within 15 feet of you who must make a constitution saving throw. On a failed save, a creature suffers from the following effects. The creature takes 2d10 thunder damage for every 20 feet you travel in a straight line, up to a maximum of 6d10. The creature drops anything it is holding in its hands. The creature is pushed 20 feet away from you. The creature is unconscious until the start of your next turn. On a successful save, the creature takes half as much damage and suffers no other ill effects from the blast. Is it just me, or does saying the target drops anything it's holding not make that much sense considering you just knocked it the f*** out? This is, uh, pretty neat. The multi-target thing is, uh, okay. I can't even hide it. This crap is like Superman levels of OP. But I contend, it doesn't really matter that much since most campaigns don't make it to level 17. Like seriously, all I want is for open hand monk Carrick to be able to punch a dragon in the face and one shot that loser. Is that really too much to ask? Final verdict time. I think the level one ability needs to be nerfed just a bit, as does the level 17 and possibly the level 11. Maybe make them having less targets, that would work. And fine. I guess the level 6 ability could be considered overpowered, you know, by pretty much everyone in the world except me. Personally, I consider it a push. After all, we are frontliners who get the same hit die as a frickin' bard. How does that make sense? Besides, it changed the monk meta of, I punch you. Now I kick you. Now I, uh, punch you again. Into something more like this. But what do you think? Would you play this one as is, or do you consider it too unbalanced? How would you fix it? Let me know in the comment. If you have some homebrew you'd like me to take a look at, put that in the comments too, but I will need a link. Thank you so much for watching, and remember, play your character. Don't let your character play you.